product designer. In this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how do we achieve more seamless responsiveness, especially when we are working with tools like Framer. Here's an example. Let us say you have a website design and built on Framer, and you're taking advantage of the default three breakpoints that Framer gives you for every new site that you create. If you are taking this website on different resolutions, you will feel very limited in terms of how you can address the number of resolutions and how you can adjust for these resolutions. For example, if we preview this, uh, right now it's getting previewed at 1200 by 740. It works fairly well. And at 1440, the design stays the same, no adjustments here. And if we increase it to 1600, let us say, these are all the common device resolutions that we are looking at. And let us say we increase it by 800, no difference. Although the height is 800, the background still ends at somewhere around 700 and things like that. So you don't see much changing, but if you want to address something, you may have to address the default or the primary breakpoint, which will change for every resolution that is above 1200. And if you want to address a resolution that is tablet, either in portrait orientation or in a landscape orientation, then you don't have the flexibility to change uh, the layout depending on that. And for the phone as well, you don't have much of the flexibility when you're designing it for 390 because the smaller phones start with 360 pixel or 340 pixel as a base today and then move upwards. So what do we do? So for this, as we worked upon a lot of projects um, in our own consulting and services, which is around no code, we've come up with certain breakpoints which address most of these resolutions. If you want to understand this better, we'll, I will dive a little bit deeper. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we test this at 1360, which will address most of the laptops, let us say we are setting it to 1600. There's a little bit of difference there and setting this to 800, uh, the background still expands. And let's say we are aiming at 1920. It goes all the way and there's a slight change in the way the text kind of organizes and how we are utilizing the value prop as well as the button associated with it, the action button. And let's say I'm going to increase this to 900, the background seamlessly scales up. And let's say I'm dropping this to 720, uh, that becomes a tablet in a portrait orientation. It works phenomenally well. And then if I increase this to, let us say 840 or something like that, or even more, 1040, 1080, there we go. So here is uh, pretty much a landscape orientation of um, your tablet. 1080 by somewhere around 700 or 600 still works. Um, if we drop it even below, let us say to 360 or even 340 for that matter, it still works. So there we go. A seamless transition between all of these resolutions. You can also see uh, as I go ahead and expand the width, it kind of reorganizes itself. And this is best understood um, through this graphic. Whenever we are designing for different kind of common resolutions, one of the common pitfalls is we design the breakpoints also as resolutions. What I mean by that is while what we need to address is the device resolutions that are on the right, as you can see, the ones that are colored is the most popular device resolutions by usage. And this data is again referenced and I will drop the references uh, below the video. And if you look into these resolutions, 
the common pitfall is to use the same 360 as a breakpoint or 375 as a breakpoint and then 1280 um, as a default breakpoint for addressing the tablet resolutions. And sometimes we use 1440 as a breakpoint uh, to use for 1440 laptops and desktops and things like that. But if we really look at it, there are always these gray areas where if you're opening up any site uh, on your laptop or a desktop, you're never really opening the site on a full screen per se. So in many ways, it's not really occupying the edge to edge, uh, the full resolution of your screen. You may be using your site on a windowed mode most of the time. Uh, even then, the layout shift should be uh, very small when you're using between a window mode and a full resolution. So to compensate for that, as well as changing the layout and structure of your site only when there is a significant change in the device resolutions makes for the most effective design. To address that, this graphic kind of lists out six resolutions instead of three that are given by Framer. You're just doubling the resolutions, but because you're addressing almost 85% of all the common resolutions that are out there, this is something, oh, this is a version one, that I have created, but then after that, I've tweaked it even further to address even more resolutions. Framer Flex Start is a kind of a starter template you can imagine for your Framer project. If you're starting with this, by default, it gives you a page. You can actually copy paste this page directly from here onto your Framer project or use this file itself uh, and copy it to your account and use this as a template based on which you are starting your projects on. Once you start the projects, the center layer, the primary breakpoint, is also highlighted by these vertical lines on either sides. You have six different breakpoints, and each breakpoint kind of outlines what resolutions is it going to affect and address. And those are the things I have put it down here. And if you can see, there is a resolution that affects most of the desktops, which is very, very clear. It's 1600, the resolution at 1680, there are some devices at that. And then there is 1710, which is also one of the resolutions that people use. So these are all the common uh, device resolutions that are between anywhere between 22 inch to 27 inch desktops. And for that, you have one breakpoint that you can address and then moving even further, onto the high resolution displays where you have the 4K, uh, 5K retina displays and monitors that are above 27 inch going up to 40 inch desktops. You have an ability to use a single breakpoint for that and you can adjust for that. Again, if you want to address split between these breakpoints as well, you want the your layout to change even between 1920 and 2560, you can do that by splitting this resolution even further. But this particular starter template addresses for 80 to 85% of the scenarios where we need very minimal amount of work um, that we can do to address most of these resolutions. So if you want to address 100% of these resolutions, I don't know if it's even possible, but if you want to hit higher up to 95% and things like that, you may have to split it even further. But again, those kind of projects are very rare and it also comes at the cost of maintaining those resolutions a lot more. So here we are. And this is something that we have created as a free resource. You can go ahead and download. I'll drop the link below and you can use it on any of these projects. So you can see the difference as to how much seamlessness this brings. Uh, here's an example project. You can also go ahead and see how this is working. Um, here's another example of how we can use this on a real project. So here's one of the projects that we are still working on, one of our own brands, uh, Pi Foundation. Again, the resolutions are addressed in terms of six default resolutions going from the primary. And all you need to do is make the changes in the primary. And if it is done well, it will cascade on to the upper resolutions and the lower resolutions as well. And further, if you want to go ahead and tweak based on that and you want to optimize it even further, you can go ahead and optimize that. And that's what these resolutions are good at, bringing a lot more efficiency for all the responsiveness 
the seamless responsiveness that you want to achieve. A lot of people have um, questions around how to address this. So I thought a video would be a better explanation of this. I've also written down articles that you can see here and here. So go ahead and if you want to drill down deeper and if you have any questions, shoot me on my Twitter or you can drop the comment below and I can take a look at that. Hope you enjoyed this and until next video. Bye-bye.